Javier Zanetti, the most loyal guard in Inter Milan history. Behind the southern stand of the Giuseppe Meazza Stadium is a museum that holds memorabilia of both Inter and AC Milan. It is not difficult to recognize Javier Zanetti's number four shirt, a shirt that you can no longer see on the pitch because it has hung here forever as a perfect testament to an undying loyalty. Let's recall an epic page from the history of Nerazzurri. Javier Zanetti was born in the southern harbor area of Buenos Aires, Argentina, an area mostly inhabited by poor working people. For the poor working class in Argentina at that time, football seemed to be the only means to forget the daily sadness and fatigue. Zanetti's family was originally Italian immigrants. But at that time, the children born in Buenos Aires were simply fascinated by the red color of the Independiente Club, which had acquired every title in both Argentina and South America. Zanetti was no exception. Even his memories of Inter Milan were a little sad when the black and blue striped team defeated Independiente twice in 1964 and 1965 in the FIFA Club World Championship Final. Inter Milan was then led by Italian coach Helenio Herrera. By the mid-80s, when Maradona moved to Napoli, televisions helped Zanetti get closer to Italian football. But instead of Napoli, this guy became a fan of Inter. The figure that fascinated Zanetti was Lotha Mathias, a steel midfielder, and above all, a leader and a spiritual pillar for the team. Zanetti's father, Rodolfo, was a builder and a supporter of Independente when Zanetti was 12 years old. When he finished school, he then worked for his father's crew as a worker. When the little Zanetti joined the Independente Training Center a year later, he thought his wish had come true. After two years of practicing, he ended up being discharged by the youth coach team because he thought Zanetti was weak and could not grow more. And so Zanetti came back to work for his father. He still loved football so much and his heart showed it every day, but life must go on. One day, his father Rodolfo told his son, Javier, what do you want to do after all? Do you really believe that you can't play professional football? Look around. Many people believe in you and think you are good. Everything at Independente went wrong, but why not try to look for opportunities elsewhere? And Zanetti started looking for a new team. He was accepted into Talliers, a team in the fourth league in Buenos Aires, and then went pro with Banfield. Also here, his innate strength was discovered. Zanetti was no different from a tractor when he worked for his father. The average worker only carried 300 buckets a day, but he carried up to 500 buckets and still had energy left over. His performance against the top clubs at that time helped him reach the sights of the big teams. The fate that brought Zanetti to Inter Milan was well documented. The day Zanetti was summoned to the U-20 Argentina team and participated in the U-20 World Cup, scouts were attending to film Ortega's talent. However, Inter Milan owner Massimo Moratti paid special attention to a young guy running constantly on the left flank. Then, an unexpected contract appeared. After struggling between the passion and his homeland, Zanetti finally found the courage to leave for Italy and fulfill his dream. Fans expressed, who the hell is Zanetti? But let's not rush to blame the fans back then because they didn't know Zanetti. They just wanted to see a golden age for Inter. But next to some contracts like Carlos, the club recruited a name that no one knew anything about. Only when Maradona said, it will be the best sign for Inter, then fans got to know him a little bit and Zanetti was more confident about his abilities. On August 27, 1995, Zanetti made his debut at Giuseppe Meazza, and the only scorer that day that helped Inter win was Roberto Carlos. From the beginning, Zanetti kicked at the right defender position Bianchi's 5-3-2, but Roy Hodgson arrived. Zanetti kicked on the right wing of the diamond midfield. On December 3, 1995, Zanetti scored his first goal against Cremonese. For the new players who came to Inter's season in 1995, Carlos was only at the club for a year and then left, and others did not show themselves very well. However, Zanetti's run began to leave a strong impression on the fans. After a difficult defeat in the penalty shootout with Schalke in 1997's UEFA final, Inter Milan recruited the best player in the world at that time, Ronaldo de Lima. And that season, 
ZZ Simone took over the seat left by Hodson. If Zanetti was asked which was his best memory in Inter's shirt, it must be the UEFA Cup final with Lazio on the 6th of May in 1998. Inter Milan had just lost Scudetto to Juventus a few days earlier, but they still had a chance to win a title for themselves. And the final opponent was Lazio. In the 60th minute of the match, Zamorano headed the ball to Zanetti and he took the shot from outside from about 16 meters. He put the ball into the space between the crossbar and the vertical pole. Lazio's goalkeeper could not reach the ball and it helped Inter Milan take the first title under Marotti's reign. He broke onto the field rushing in happiness, running everywhere despite his teammates chasing him. Up to the present, it is still the most important goal in his life. The goal seems to be the first love that will always be immortal in his mind and it opened up the rebirth of the great enter. The late 90s and early 2000s, it was often said that the two wings at Giuseppe Meazza had always been the most ragged places on the pitch by Paolo Mandini and Javier Zanetti. But the hardships had still come to him and his team. A year later, Zanetti played very well to lock Ryan Giggs in the sunset stage of Ryan's career. But Inter was still stopped by Manchester United in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. The loss put an end to this extremely poor season for Inter, and one that found them in the eighth position in the domestic league, 24 points behind the top team and not even attending the European Cup the next season. In the summer of 1999, Zanetti was handed the captain's armband from Giuseppe Misomi. Never had an Argentine become a captain of Inter, but the Blue Stripe team was still facing its share of trouble. Ronaldo suffered serious injuries in the 10th round and only came back at the end of the season. And many other players were injured and the team's performance did not improve. At the end of the season, Inter ranked fourth, equaling to Parma and had to play off to compete for the Champions League ticket. Fortunately, this time they won. And in the 2000-2001 season, Zanetti injured his left thigh muscle during the warm-up period before the season began and had to take a 40-day break. That same season, Inter had to say goodbye to the Champions League early on. They were defeated in the preliminary round by a small team called Heinzelborg, and Marcelo Lippi declared he was no longer able to control the changing room and left the team. Unfortunately, his replacement, Marco Tardelli, could not help the team improve. Inter lost to Parma 1-6, and then lost to Milan 0-6, and then were knocked out of the UEFA Cup by Alves. The fans became restless and started to protest, and Zanetti recalled in his autobiography, I almost died when a bottle of gasoline was thrown into the team bus. Another bad season passed, and Inter ranked fifth, in the next season, Hector Cooper was assigned. As a coach, this strategist who brought Valencia to two consecutive Champions League finals has completely changed the face of Inter. Zanetti returned to the right-back defender, and this was one of his best seasons. The last day of the season, on May 5th of 2002, Inter just needed to win the last match against Lazio to become the champion. They were one point ahead of Juventus and two points from Roma, but then the pressure was too great. Zanetti and his teammates fell to Lazio 2-4 and once again offered the trophy to Juventus. Javier Zanetti cried like a child. His tears that day must still be in the minds of Interista. Reminders of an excellent but cruel season that later became known as the Calciopoli scandal. Rumors of whether Zanetti would move to Manchester United or Real Madrid began to stir. Later, when asked again, he answered very briefly, it never appeared in my mind that I would leave this team until the end of my career. The exposed Calciopoli scandal has returned the purity of the League of Italy, and Inter Milan emerged as a giant in Italy. They enjoyed five consecutive years of winning the Scudetto and a series of other titles, such as the Italian Super Cup, the Italian Cup, and the Club World Cup. The bitter years are left behind, and it has now returned the sweet fruit to the great captain of Inter. At the Bernabeu in 2010, when Melito became the killer of the great trouble for Inter, Zanetti himself burst into tears again. This time, they were tears of joy as he hugged the most prestigious cup in Europe. This is the trophy that Inter had been waiting for for 38 years. The trophy that he had always wanted since he was a child. It was also the brightest star before Inter Milan began falling into a crisis period once again. 
Even with the glory that no longer comes to enter, people still see the familiar things that once existed on the pitch. Giuseppe Meazza, that face, tirelessly running with old hair and endless loyalty. Zanetti may not be Italian, but if asked, any Italian fan will answer that he is the greatest son of the club. Milan is the second home for him after his native country. On May 6th of 2014, Zanetti officially announced his retirement, saying that retiring at the age of 40 is very honorable. I feel very proud of myself. After my injury last year, I wanted to show that I can come back to play with the highest level and have done it. But now is the right time to quit the game. I dream of ending my career at Inter. On the day Zanetti broke up on the pitch, the Inter people suddenly realized that the most dramatic and beautiful chapter in their history had suddenly disappeared. After nearly 20 years of playing with Inter Milan with several coaches, no one has ever complained about his professional attitude. He only received a total of three red cards in his entire career. This great captain also has the most appearances with 856 matches. On the national team, he also holds the same record when he had 145 games for Argentina in the period between 1994 to 2011 and scored five goals. Javier Zanetti is a living witness for Inter Milan from suffering to glory and from glory to despair. But no matter, Inter will never stop missing him. His number four shirt is hung in the club's museum and his steps will be kept in the record and the memory of Inter Milan fans. Thank you to a legend. Please show your love for Inter Milan and for Zanetti in the comments section below.